The goal of this presentation is to show that I think it would be better to, to tell you first the title. Uh, writing science in the 21st century from technologies of recommendation to industries of uh, innovative reuse. Uh, the goal of this presentation is to show that what is already making its way in several internet sectors could be applied in a productive manner to science. Obviously keeping in mind that the characteristics and social rules which guide scientific activity and the behavior of scholars is different. In the same way that certain qualities which characterize any internet project wishing to belong to the so-called web 2.0 are already being discussed, science has already embarked on the pathway that will transform it into science 2.0. A detailed analysis of the characteristics of a science 2.0 goes farther than the scope of the present, this presentation, and so I would invite you, if you are interested, to read some of the articles which I am currently in the last stages of writing, and which will be published during 2008 or finding that in 2009. In this presentation, I will only focus on the scientific publication and communication system, and will point out why the current proposals of open access to academic journals are not ambitious enough and why I believe that many of the technological and methodological tendencies which are currently making their way in the internet will also end up asserting themselves in a field which apparently more protected such as science. Since there is no sufficient time for a detailed discussion, justification of my arguments, my principal aim is to set out the general idea of my proposal. I would call said proposal Open Access 2.0 if I were asked to put it in a nutshell. Technologies of recommendation. Many of the web 2.0 projects are characterized by the encouragement of user participation. The idea is to create social networks that bring about the emergence of a collective intelligence which improves the products of or services offered online. This collective intelligence is fueled by the recommendations which the users make between themselves in the exchange of experiences. These recommendations have been implemented in various ways, sometimes by means of labels with keywords or brief descriptions, or times through more extensive observations and comments and on other occasions by using as true techniques to relate products, behaviors, linkings, or tendencies. A well-known example of success in the use of this type of technique is Amazon, a tool which allows users to write reviews or to make comments about their favorite readings matter, uh, uh, reading matter has been added to the auto its automatic recommendation system on the basis of the purchases and behavior of users of their website. Among the internet search engines, Google has clearly stolen the lead as a result of PageRank, an algorithm that, amongst other things, counts the hyperlinks between web pages. The more people link with a specific page, the more confidence this page has for the searcher and, consequently, the higher it will appear in the list that Google presents on screen to show search results. What is more, Google greater weight to the pages which are linked with pages that already have high confidence value as a consequence of having many other pages which links with them. It's important to realize, to realize that all these hyperlinks that I am talking about are deli deliberately dependent on people. In other words, they depend on the will, knowledge, beliefs, wishes, and intentions of their users. Therefore, I, uh, if we have a specific project or business 
we should know how to manage these subjective qualities correctly in order to improve our service to the group of users or clients we are targeting. The founders of Google took the idea from a model that a chemist and bibliographer, Eugene Garfield, applied to science. Index link linking by citations and the impact factor of the different academic journals are aspects that are well known by scholars insofar as grants, subsidies, and even their salaries depend on them. Index linking by citations functions in a similar way to the Google algorithm. As I have previous, uh, I have, sorry. Uh, the difference is that instead of counting hyperlinks, Garfield counted the number of citations that a specific or uh, article or journal had received in other articles written at a later date. Garfield's inspiration was found in the normal procedures of the United States courts. Indeed, this may stand as the historical origin of the technologies of recommendation. Thus, United States attorneys cite prior cases because they set precedent, precedent, resorting to a prior case with a favorable outcome which might serve as a convincing argument for the one who brings it up. Said case is referenced by the volume and page on which it's recorded, or, or a particular status, statute by the article, chapter, section, and publication in which it's found. Thus, in the final quarter of the 19th century, a publication entitled Shepard Citations appeared. It belonged to the consulting firm of Frank Shepard Company that took it upon themselves to provide attorneys with such citations, cases, statutes, and sentences, and especially to show the history of a case by documenting all subsequent cases in which it was cited and reporting on the outcome of sentencing in those subsequent cases in which the case being studied was cited. The index, here you can see an example. Uh, the index of legal causes ever detailed the history of each case using a simple letter code. E, for those cases in which the court gave an explanation of the original case cited. A, to denote that uh, on that occasion the court upheld the precedent D, to specify that the clarification of the distinctions regarded, regarding the original case were introduced, and so on. Let us consider this example. You can see, the original case which, uh, with which the attorney begins his research is case 101 appearing in the page two, uh, 210 of, Massachusetts, of the state of Massachusetts. The case that appear on the above list are all those in which the original case was cited. Thus, in case 130, Mass 89, the court gave an explanation of the original case as indicated by the letter code E. In case 192, 192 Mass 69, the court introduced a clarification or distinction, D, with respect to the original case, thereby limiting the area in which the case was valid as precedent. And in case 281 mass 63, the United States Supreme Court asserted a that the case constituted sound legal precedent, which was published in the Harvard Law Review. Garfield quickly perceived the validity of the sham for indexing scientific knowledge and immediately applied it to reference works in the area of chemistry patterns. The way patent offices function is similar to the sham we have been describing, since examiners must be satisfied and confirmed that the invention is truly original. To do so, they use such reference works. Their decisions must be supported by references to research and previous patents in such a way that the entire history of the field of invention is accurately recorded and may be retrieved efficiently and without gaps.